Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section, and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to Describe how energy flows from the sun along feeding pathways. You should also be able to Define nutrient recycling by organisms and describe the carbon and nitrogen cycles. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand here? At the end of the first section, you should be able to explain that all the energy in living things really comes from the sun. In the second section, you have to be able to explain that the nutrients that make up the bodies of living things are recycled and used over and over again. Let's battle on. We are going to approach the learning of our ecology definitions or ecology terms like you would approach the learning of a new language. When you learn a new language you have to learn your vocabulary. When you know your vocabulary you can put it together and speak the language. The same thing here. When you learn your ecology definitions you can put them together and then you can speak the language of ecology. It is vital to learn your definitions therefore and make sure you understand what they mean. Energy flow in the ecosystem is a very important concept and we're going to meet it time and time again so it's terribly important to try to understand this idea. Every ecosystem needs a constant input of energy to function properly. In other words, all of the energy in the ecosystem comes from the sun. We are very dependent on this supply of energy. We are never going to run out of it in our lifetime anyway. Now, the sun is the primary source of energy for our planet and everything depends on the sun, as we have just said, and feeding allows the energy to flow from one organism to another. When the sun shines on the plant, the solar energy is changed into the chemical energy in the food when the plant makes its own food in photosynthesis. For those of you able for a bit more, this is actually an energy conversion where solar energy is converted into chemical energy. The chemical energy present in the plant is then passed on to other organisms when they eat the plant or when they feed on each other. So the chemical energy in the plant is passed on to the caterpillar, which then passes it on to the thrush when it gets eaten. So energy is passed from organism to organism by feeding. The chemical energy is passed along the food chain. In summary, the energy flows in from the sun. We are never going to run short of it and the energy continues to flow through the ecosystem by feeding. However, this is not the case with regard to nutrients and minerals. The planet only has a certain amount of these. We are not going to be supplied with more from space or anywhere else. So these nutrients and minerals have to be recycled and they have to be used time and time again. This brings us to the definition of nutrient recycling. Nutrient recycling is the process of exchanging elements like carbon and nitrogen between living organisms and the environment. That's the definition. It is basically saying that we are going to recycle the carbon in nature, we are going to recycle nitrogen in nature, Sometimes the carbon and the nitrogen might be present in living organisms and sometimes the carbon and nitrogen might be present in the atmosphere. But basically these two nutrients are recycled and exchanged between living organisms and the environment. So the carbon cycle is the process through which carbon is exchanged between living organisms and the environment and keeping life easy, a similar definition for the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is the process through which nitrogen is exchanged between living organisms 
and the environment as well. The carbon cycle. Now there are many ways of drawing carbon cycles. This is my way of drawing it. We have to be able to cope with different ways. A heads up. What you need to look at first is you need to find a phrase relevant to the idea that carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere in front of your nose at the minute. There is only one way of taking that out of the atmosphere and that is in the process of photosynthesis where plants use it to make their own food. There will only ever be one arrow coming out of the box containing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You will then know that this process is photosynthesis. The carbon dioxide through a process of photosynthesis the carbon ends up in the plant's body. Now this plant can be eaten by an animal or it might give out the carbon dioxide in respiration. The animal that ate the plant will die. So when bacteria of decay decay this animal then the bacteria of decay will give out the carbon dioxide or the animal when it was alive give out carbon dioxide. If the plant does not get eaten but just dies then the bacteria of decay that are decaying the plant they will give out carbon dioxide. So all of these processes over here are all down to respiration. So all of these processes will put the carbon dioxide back into the air. Now on occasion the plant might be fossilized. In other words it gets crushed by rocks and trapped and over thousands of years turns into fossil fuels. The fossil fuels remain under the ground in the guise of oil or coal or turf and when you burn the fossil fuels the carbon dioxide that was in the plant originally in a plant that a dinosaur walked on isn't that so cool and then when you burn that fossil fuel you are releasing the carbon dioxide back out into the atmosphere. So this diagram is basically showing how carbon dioxide is exchanged between living organisms and the environment. This cycle needs to be practiced and memorized. What is the role of the organisms in the carbon cycle? What is their function? Well the plants take in carbon from the environment when they carry out photosynthesis and they will return it to the environment when they do respiration. This is the part that they play in the carbon cycle. What part do animals play? What is their function? When animals take in carbon when they eat the plants and they will return it to the environment when they do respiration. That is their role in the cycle. Fungi or fungi in bacteria return the carbon to the environment when they decompose dead plants and animals. It's very important to understand the role of all of these organisms in the carbon cycle. Now the nitrogen cycle is a little bit more complicated and will require a bit more effort to master. Again there are several ways of drawing nitrogen cycles. As a heads up you always look for the point where nitrogen is in the atmosphere. We must understand that nitrogen is in the atmosphere in front of your nose at the minute. In fact 78% of the air in front of your nose at the minute is made of nitrogen. This nitrogen is largely useless. There's only one way of taking that nitrogen out of the atmosphere and turning it into a useful form. This is carried out by what we call nitrogen fixing bacteria and the process is called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation takes nitrogen from the atmosphere and turns it into nitrate or something useful that plants can use to build their bodies. So in other words nitrogen fixation turns nitrogen into nitrates carried out by nitrogen-fying bacteria. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Yeah. 
I'll fix you and make something useful out of you. The nitrogen is now part of the plant's body. When the plant gets eaten by the animals, then the nitrogen becomes part of the animal's body. The plant might die and the animals will die. When the plants and animals die, they are decayed by bacteria of decay. As part of the decay process, the bacteria of decay release ammonia. This is rather smelly. That's the reason why you know there is a dead rat in the ditch, because you can smell it. The ammonia can then be taken by nitrifying bacteria in the soil and turned into a material called nitrite. This material can be further converted into nitrate. This is present in the soil. It is a fertilizer. If you like, the most fertile part of that ditch is where the dead rat was. This nitrate can then be absorbed by the plant roots and the nitrogen then becomes part of the plant's body. Sometimes the nitrate in the soil can be denitrified or turned back into nitrogen in the atmosphere. We must also mention that on occasion there is a chance that nitrogen in the atmosphere can be turned directly into useful nitrate by lightning. Lightning provides the energy for this chemical reaction to take place and spares the nitrifying bacteria a job. Actually spares the nitrogen fixing bacteria a job. This nitrogen cycle needs to be learned properly and practiced a number of times. There are a number of terms associated with the nitrogen cycle. Strictly speaking, according to the biology syllabus, they're not required. But I think you should have them under your belt because we will meet this material again in the section on bacteria. Nitrogen fixation, therefore, is the changing of nitrogen gas in the atmosphere into nitrate which is useful. I'll fix you and make something useful out of you. Nitrification. This is the changing of ammonia into nitrite first of all and then into nitrate. The chemist should have a realization of that process and should know the formulas involved. Denitrification is the opposite. Denitrification is the conversion of nitrates into nitrogen gas. If you're finding life difficult, you can neglect these so-called definitions, but if you are able for a bit more, you should take them on board. Now, what is the role of organisms in the nitrogen cycle? Bacteria in particular play a large part in the nitrogen cycle. It's very important to understand their role because this will also come up in the chapter on bacteria the first bacteria involved in the nitrogen cycle are the bacteria called nitrogen fixing bacteria. These can be free living in the soil, but they can also live in swellings on the roots of certain plants like clover. These bacteria have the capacity to change nitrogen gas, which is basically useless and cannot be used, into a usable form called nitrate. Bacteria decay change dead organic matter to ammonia. So bacteria decay, basically release ammonia out into the atmosphere and the ammonia contains nitrogen. Nitrifying bacteria change ammonia into nitrates and denitrifying bacteria do the opposite. They change the nitrates into nitrogen gas. Basically that's quite a detailed list of functions that the bacteria carried out and might need a bit of work to master. The fungi change dead organic matter into ammonia. The plants, well their role or their function is to change the nitrates into plant protein. In other words, the nitrates, the fertilizer, the nitrogen in the fertilizer becomes part of the plant's body. The animals then will change the plant protein into animal protein and the nitrogen becomes part of the animal's body. Again, the nitrogen cycle and the role of the organisms will need a little effort to master and does come up quite often.
Now that we have arrived at the end of the lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you describe how energy flows from the sun along feeding pathways? Can you also define nutrient recycling and describe the carbon and nitrogen cycles?